Any human beings in the house? Do we have any human? Yes, excellent, excellent. Human beings are pretty awesome, aren't we? It's fascinating because there are certain predictable behaviors that we human beings fall into. Just to prove my point a little bit, when Sandy mentioned that I rode a motorcycle, a few of you had some thoughts. I'm going to read your minds right now. Some of you were not impressed by the fact that I'm a leadership expert. Some of you were not impressed by my extensive book collection. But when you heard that I rode a motorcycle, <laughs> you thought, hey, that's kind of cool. <laughs> you gained a little bit of respect for me that you didn't expect to have because I ride a motorcycle. Now, others of you, when you heard that I rode a motorcycle, you wanted to know the stats about my motorcycle. I found out that when you ride a motorcycle, people want to know that I drive a car too. Nobody has ever asked me the engine size of my car. <laughs> but if I ride a motorcycle, I have to know the stats. So for the record, it's a 2011 Harley Davidson Sportster, 883 Super Low, <laughs> glossy black, yes. <laughs> and the other thing that maybe went through some of your minds when you heard I rode a motorcycle. I can guarantee some of you, if we were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you would have told me about the person that you know who died riding a motorcycle. <laughs> it is a fact that those of us who ride motorcycles have learned to accept is going to come our way. So these are some predictable human behaviors that we know happen around motorcycles. Now let's talk about something that's more relevant to you as a leader in, a, in the software industry. What are some of those predictable human behaviors that we have in the workplace? I did some research myself and I asked a number of technology leaders, what are some of your biggest leadership challenges? I actually had a list of 16 different areas, things that are written about in books and in journals and in articles, and I asked them what were their biggest challenges. And do you know that there was one challenge in particular that came up more often, it was number one by far, and that is overcoming the politics, turf wars, and egos that are killing collaboration. Overcoming the politics, turf wars, and egos that are killing collaboration. Now luckily, we have these predictable behaviors. Now sometimes those behaviors are a little bit messy, but they are predictable, and we can use those to help us do a better job with this particular leadership challenge. Now why do they happen? Why do these things happen? A number of reasons. I know of an organization that purposefully has set up a cutthroat culture with the idea that if they have a very competitive environment that they will get the best out of their people. And I'm not saying that won't work, but I am saying that it is not healthy and it is not sustainable. But usually when it happens, it's because of default. It's not planning for something different. And so today we're going to talk about what we can do. You see, politics happen because some people have more influence than others. They develop that political clout. We know that when work gets complex, we break it into smaller, subdivide that work into smaller sections so that makes sure everything gets covered. And that's when we create the silos. And we pour a lot of ourselves into our work. We as humans have this, uh, uh, this sense of uh, really wanting to care about what we do. And so of course egos are going to get in the way. But we can, when we have these particular behaviors and we introduce anxiety into the equation, that's when we get the negative results where people are doing illogical things to protect themselves and the stuff that's theirs. So today we'll talk about some new or re revamped predictable behaviors so that we can get the kind of results that we want. And we're going to call these some professionally human traits. We don't want to get rid of our humanity, but we want to marry it with the personal, professional self that we bring to work. And when we do that, that's when we're going to get the collaborative, collaborative environment that we really want 
that gives us the business results and the innovations we need in today's workplace. So let's talk about professional behavior number one. We know that there is an element of human nature that makes us selfish. Am I right? We have this really strong sense of self-preservation. But there's another aspect of human behavior that runs contrary to that. We want to be part, we long to be part of something that's larger than ourselves. I served as an officer in the United States Navy for 11 years. I took an oath to defend our country. And over the centuries, hundreds, millions of people have served in the armed forces knowing that they could die in defense of our country because we believe in, a high, in something bigger than ourselves. But we don't have to do that big, grandiose thing. We can do that in a workplace too by tapping into people's want and desire to be part of something that's larger than themselves. And how we do that is by, is by making sure that we understand the higher purpose of our organization. What is it that we're in business to do? What do we do that makes the world a better place and that serves our clients? Now, what it is not, it is not being the number one provider in our industry. It is not maximizing shareholder value. Most people don't get behind that as an idea. It needs to be something bigger. So let me give you a couple of examples. I used to work for a cellular phone company. I was in the system test organization and I thought, how do I get my people more dedicated to this? We're just a phone company. But I started thinking about the conversations that I had on my cell phone. It's cancer. It's a boy. Could you do me a favor and stop by after work and get some sour cream? <laughs> We have a lot of important conversations, the people that matter with us most on our cell phones. And that's what I talk to my team about. We're making sure that people can communicate with the people that mean the most to them. We're not just about selling cell phones, we're about that communication with the people that matter most. Last year my daughter lost 40 pounds. She feels much healthier, feels great about herself, and I asked her how she did it. Of course, she cut back on her food intake, and she walked two miles a day. No, excuse me, two hours a day. Two miles, not that big a deal. Two hours a day, that's a big deal, yes? Now, not all at one time, okay? She broke it up during the day. But she was walking two hours a day. Now, what you don't know about my daughter is that she was born with bad feet. She had to have corrective shoes as an infant. She had to have expensive orthotic inserts as a teenager. She had bad feet. So I said, what, how did you do that? She said, I went to the Foot Locker. I told them what I was trying to accomplish. They fit me into these shoes, and I haven't had a lick of problem since then. Now, one of my good friends is an IT director at Foot Locker. I could not hardly wait to tell him that story. And he wanted to share it with his group too. He wanted to share it with their organization. They don't just sell shoes, they help people get healthy. It's that bigger picture. What is it that your organization does? So professional human, professionally human behavior number one, how do we tap into the fact that people want to be part of something that's bigger than themselves. So identify your organization's higher purpose. Believe it. Articulate it. Connect your people with the purpose in your organization. It's a lot easier to be collaborative when you're working towards a higher goal that everybody can buy into. So take advantage of the fact that people want to be part of something that's bigger than themselves.